Hola, aquí estamos otra vez con las expresiones idiomáticas españolas. Ok, entonces ahora empezamos con el verbo llevar. Ok, so we're with the verb llevar. By the way, I've got to say that uh, we're getting fantastic feedback on the this series of idiomatic expressions, okay? Some people asked us to make sure we put the words that we're saying, I'm saying, down in the description. I've done that so that people can, maybe if they're not quite hearing it correctly, okay? We have had some feedback saying I'm not giving enough examples and uh, blah, 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 blah. Look, I, I, I don't want to make these so long-winded. I'm going to do a lot of videos, so really it's to give you an idea of how it's used and then it's your duty then to go off and find a bit more if you want. This is just to help you understand how it's used, okay? All right, but learning is all about you taking part in the learning. It isn't just about having it given, of course, I know that I know all of you understand that. It's just some people are saying, no, we want more. Come on, get a bit of work done yourself. Hay que trabajar también, ¿eh? Vale, bien. Entonces, llevar, llevar. Ok, llevar is to wear, to carry, ok? Um, but I want to focus just on one thing that llevar is used for, ok? Um, and again, we'll do another, uh, unless we've already done it, but we'll do another video on llevar itself. Would that be Cynthia and I when we do our, our blogs, our word blogs? But you know, llevar is a, as a verb that's used when you're taking somebody somewhere. Right now in English, what we what we do, and uh, so many times my, uh, my students say, yeah, uh, conduje a mi hijo a la escuela ayer. I drove my son to school, all right? Now, that's a metaphor, all right? I don't know, we've talked about this before, but that's a metaphor. All right, you do not drive your son to school. You don't, because your son's not a car. Your son is a person, and he doesn't have a steering wheel nor an engine. All right, so what the Spanish do, much more literal. Spanish is a lot more literal than, than English. English is littered with these metaphors. Spanish people take, they carry somebody, okay? So, what they do is they say this, lleve a mi hijo a la escuela ayer o al colegio. So listen to what I just said. Llevé a mi hijo a la escuela. Okay, so llevé, I took. I, I kind of carried, literally I carried, all right? Um, a mi hijo, so that's the personal A, all right? Remember when you do, when any interaction between you and another person, you need to use this personal A and the, the the thing is, the difficulty is that it doesn't appear in English, okay? But it must be used. So really, a Span that's why you hear Spanish speakers who say, I took to my son, okay? Because for them, it's got to be there. Ah, too, all right? But in English, it isn't. So, lleve a mi hijo a la escuela. Now, if you want to be absolutely clear and you want to say, I took him in the car, then all you would do is you'd say, lleve en coche a mi hijo. Okay, so you just specify en coche. Uh -huh. So, llevar, to take somebody somewhere. All right? Mm -hmm. Bien, okay. Ahora, now this one's standard, standard. However, just want to be clear that you understand how it's used. Me gustaría, me gustaría. Now, who knows what tense that is? All right, do you know? It's the conditional, that's right, if you knew it. The conditional. So, me gustaría. And it literally means, I would like. Now, what the conditional, what its job is, the conditional, is to say something that could, would, or should happen, but there's a condition on it. So, the difference between saying, me gusta el café, Okay, um, is I like or me gusta un café. Me gusta un café por la mañana. I like a coffee in the morning. Okay, the difference between that and me gustaría un café is I would like a coffee. The condition is <laughs> if somebody would make it for me. If somebody made it, I would like a coffee. Or if I could, I would like a coffee. 
all right? So all that happens with the conditional is that it's, it's really, it's a desire. It's expressing a desire. It isn't sure that you're going to have one, yeah? Because I could say, sabes, me gustaría ir a España ahora mismo, porque allí está mi mujer y mi hijo. Okay, so I would like to go to Spain right now because my wife and my son are there. But I'm not going to go. I would like to, if I could, but I can't, so I won't, all right? So that's what the condition is. If I could, I would do it. And that's what me gustaría is. It's used in a lot of places as something very polite. Me gustaría un café, okay? Be aware that in Spain, it isn't used very much. The reason is because um, me gustaría un café is kind of like putting a condition. I would like one, but I, maybe I shouldn't have one. I'd like one, all right? In Spain, they're much more direct. Oh, I want a coffee. You know, quiero un café. Yeah? ¿Qué quieres tomar? Quiero un café. All right? They don't kind of fluff around it. They just tell you what they want. All right? Um, I think maybe in other countries, and certainly I know in, in Mexico, um, they would use, for example, quisiera. Quisiera, I would like. Which is, which is actually the imperfect subjunctive being used as a conditional, which is a very unusual word. Uh, but quisiera, si, sí, quisiera un café. That's a, that's a lot more polite. I think probably in Mexico, for sure, uh, they're a lot more polite about the way that they ask for things. Uh, not that Spanish people aren't polite, but culturally, they're more direct, okay? The best way of, of dealing with things like that is just to listen to what other people do. When If you're in a bar, listen to what other people are saying when they're ordering drinks, okay? Not foreigners, native people, and copy them. Yeah, because every place is different. Yeah, for example, in England, if we go to get a drink, we say, "Could I have?" Right? We are very polite. Could I have? Could I have a beer? Uh huh. Or can you give me a beer? Now I know in the U.S. I've heard, "Can I get? Can I get a beer?" All right. So this, you know, we both speak English, and yet two different countries have different ways of saying it. The same with the Spanish speaker. Whatever I tell you is only based on my experience, limited experience, and other countries will do other things, okay? Bien, pues me gustaría, okay? Uh, ahora me toca, o oh, tocar, tocarte, okay? What, it, what it's used for a lot is when, you know how in English we say it's your turn, or it's my turn? It's your turn, it's my turn. Well, their, their, their way of saying that is to say it touches you or it touches me. Okay, the turn, I suppose, is touching, yeah? So what they do is they say this. Uh, me toca? Me toca a mí? Is it my turn? Si, 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 te toca. Okay, you, you know, if you're playing cards, dominoes, whatever, uh, and it's your turn, you say, bueno, eh, me toca? Si, si, te toca. Mm -hmm. All right, so is that my turn? Yes. Is it touching me, the turn? Yes. Yes, it's touching you. Okay. Now, how would you say then? Quiz time. How would you say, whose turn is it? Mmm. Have a think. I'm going to tell you now. Right. Whose turn is it? How you have to say that in Spanish is this. You say, to whom... To them, is it touching? There you are. It's, of course, it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It's exactly what you had in mind as well. So, how you say that is, a quien le toca? A quien le toca? Okay, to whom? To them, is it touching? Okay, a quien le toca? Whose turn is it? Whose go is it? All right? A quien le toca? No, oh, me toca a mí. No, te toca a ti. Okay, and remember, a mí, a ti, that's extra, extra information. The actual sentence is, te toca, me toca. And just, it works exactly like gustar. So you say, a mí me gusta, a mí me toca. A ti te gusta, a ti te toca. A quién le gusta, a quién le toca. There's no difference. Who likes it? Whose turn is it? Who is it touching? Okay? Great, I love Spanish. Isn't it fantastic, isn't it? You know, when you learn something and you learn structure and then you start to see patterns in it, oh man, it's so cool. 
Ok, so, bien. Entonces, ahora me toca cambiar de, de vídeo, ¿vale? Ok, so, also, when you say me toca, it means uh, I am due to, you know, it's I have to do something now. For example, ¿sabes? Me toca um, trabajar mañana. I have to work tomorrow. It's my turn to work tomorrow. Okay? Me toca. So it can be, it's, it is my turn, but I suppose it's it's used in a weird way, like, you know, oh God, I have to work tomorrow. No, no, me toca trabajar mañana. Okay? I have to work tomorrow. And also, if you win the lottery, all right, they tend not to say, eh, he ganado la lotería. They say, the lottery has touched me. And they say, me ha tocado el gordo. <laughs> the big fat one's touched me. Okay? But, me ha tocado la lotería. I have won the lottery. The lottery has touched me. Okay? So, th this is another way that they use tocar. Bien. Vale. Nos vemos en el siguiente video. Hasta pronto. Adiós.